All right, what is up my homies and welcome to day two great gaming today on the Commonwealth contractor We are going to be taking a look at how to construct multi-story structures or multi room structures So this is something that a lot of people comment on my videos How do you actually get the inside walls on a lot of your towers or how do you construct buildings that have multiple rooms? Or how do you construct buildings that just have multiple floors? These are all things that can really trip up a lot of people And so I figured that this is an excellent opportunity to showcase basically basically how to work with the different build sets and some of the limitations of working with each of those. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump right in. All right, so here we are. We are looking at several different styles of walls from several different build sets. So here we have our concrete wall. Here we have our wood wall. Here we have our metal wall. And here we have a warehouse and barn wall. So you can see many of these are basically just retextures of existing walls and are designed to do exactly the same thing. They take up the same dimensions and they snap the exact same way. But that doesn't mean that just because the wood and the metal are complete mirrors of each other, that they're going to behave the same way as the concrete or the barn set. So let's take a look at how these are all snapping to the floor. So if we look at the concrete, the concrete is actually snapping below the floor and it's snapping to the outside. So we can see that the concrete is actually quite a bit taller than the wood or the metal. And that's going to become important if we are working with multi-story structures, because that means that we're going to have to use specific sets of stairs as we go. On the other hand, we have these shorter shack and steel walls which snap to the top of the flooring so they're actually set in a little bit in comparison to the concrete so they actually are inside or on top of the floor instead of on the outside and the same with our barn and our warehouse they are snapped to the top of the flooring instead of to the outside so this becomes important if we're planning on doing like decking because if i try and add some decking to each of these walls You can see number one, that these walls will interfere with its ability to snap to the actual flooring. So you have to attach your flooring before you attach your wall. So let's just pull that out. Snap our flooring. Ah, where did it go? And snap back and you can see that because the concrete is snapping to the outside of the flooring, it's actually going to offset our floor. So this is one of the reasons why I had to completely pull all of the walls out of my Starlight Drive-In Tower when I was doing my Commonwealth Contractor Fixing Starlight series, where I needed to pull all of my flooring in in order to get a wraparound deck. And it was because my flooring was snapped to my walls rather than my flooring snapped to flooring. So you do have to be careful about when and where you place different styles of walls. So that's just one of the things that you wanna keep in mind when you begin constructing a multi-story structure or a structure that has a wraparound deck is making sure that your walls are properly set. Now, once your walls are properly set or your decking is properly set, there's nothing that prevents you from being able to clip a concrete wall through a floor. So concrete wall has no problem at all snapping to another wall if there's a floor in the way. It will just clip through it. So I can build right there. And so you see, even though this is now the proper width that we would need for a wraparound deck, the wall was still able to set and snap at the proper distance and width to what we wanted. So that's kind of a little build trick for doing wraparound decking. And you saw that in my Commonwealth Contractor uh, fixing starlight build. So let's talk about building a multi-story structure for a minute. So let's go ahead and get rid of this barn and warehouse real quick. And let's just work with this shack structure. All right, so say we want to build a multi-story shack in here. So we have a few options for flooring, but one thing that you will want to note is that you cannot snap your shack walls 
to the top of other shack walls, and there's a very specific reason for this. So my concrete, on the other hand, this is one of the reasons why I like concrete so much, is that it does snap to the top of other concrete. So it allows you to build your way up much faster as you don't have to worry about flooring being placed first. And it also is a much more seamless transition from floor to floor as you're working. But back to constructing with the shack or metal sets, the metal set does not contain floors. It only contains roofs. And so this is one thing that throws a lot of people off if they're trying to construct a multi-story um, metal structure. There is no floor for them to work with. And of course, roofs snap to the top of these walls, but you cannot build another wall on top of this because they are only designed to snap to the top of a floor. So that's why the wood built set, this is how you have to go about building a two story metal structure is you actually have to go to the floor section of your wood build set. And you're going to run into a floor that is a little thicker so you see here, these floors that I'm looking at are multi-level. They have two pieces. It looks like there's two floors stacked on top of each other. This is a roof and a floor put together. And a nice thing about this is it uses the exact same amount of wood and steel as just placing a floor. So this allows you to do two jobs, adding a roof and a floor with the same amount of build materials as you would if you were just constructing another floor. So by doing this, by snapping this roof, then you are able to construct your multi-story structure. And if we add another wall to the top of this, so if I snap a wall to the top, if you look from the outside, you can see there's a roof on top of the first wall and a floor underneath the second set of walls and so that's pretty much how the shed and the metal are both designed to function so let me go ahead and snap a metal piece to that other side of the corner and so this is one reason people do not like the metal build set is because if you're building in metal, you're probably going for more of a fireproof aesthetic. You're looking for something that's going to be more fortified, something that's a little heavier duty. And when you are forced to use the wood flooring set in order to construct a multi-story structure, you're no longer fireproof. You're no longer that heavy fortification. You still have exposed wood all over the place when you are constructing multi-story metal structures. And that's one reason I usually do not avail myself of the metal build set, just because you are forced to work with the shack wood build set when you're dealing with it. Another problem when you're dealing with the metal and shack build sets is your stairs. So how do you build stairs when you're working with these. So for instance, there is a specific piece of flooring. I'll get rid of that one for now. In the wood build set, I think it's under floors. Yeah, so we have this section of flooring that has its own stairwell built in. And so this automatically is set up for a multi-story stack or shack structure where you have a wood floor and a wood roof on top of it and a wood floor on top of that. So this is a perfectly centered stairwell. However, if you're trying to build smaller shacks that are only two floor widths in length, there's really not enough room for you to work with. You have to have a full floor square or at least a half square in either end of this in order to make it work. So otherwise, it just will not snap together. So it works just fine if you are building a minimum of a two by six or two by three structure, six floor squares. Otherwise, you just do not have enough room for this to actually work because otherwise I would have a wall right here 
which prevents me from actually getting to my stairwell. So these are a bit problematic. Another issue that people will run into is by trying to go with one of the other sets of stairs. The wood build set actually has several different styles of stairs. So let me patch that hole in the floor real quick. So we cannot go with this set because it is designed to have both the floor and the roof built in. So this is more for like outsides of set of shacks when you're working with this stair. So we're going to ignore that one and climb back up here. And we're instead going to go with this one. This is basically the same set of stairs that we had before. And so we can use this set of stairs, but there is no half wide square. There's no rectangular floor space or roof space for the wood shack. So the closest you're going to get is under floors where we go with these half by halves, which is a quarter of the square footage. So you can add these, but of course the side effect to that is you're going to have an air gap between your two floors. That is bad for many reasons. That's bad for structural reasons. That's bad for defense reasons. Someone can just lob a grenade through there. It's bad for insulation reasons. It's going to get drafty. So this is one reason a lot of people really struggle with multi-story structures. Also, as I mentioned earlier, your different structures are designed for different heights, which means that these wood stairs are not going to work if you're working with concrete walls. And as you noticed with the drastically different height of the warehouse and the barn walls, if I am using concrete walls or if I'm using these wood or metal walls and I try and use the stairs for the warehouse build set, which is designed for both the warehouse and the barn, they're quite a bit taller because they're designed to interface with those other walls instead of this one, which is shorter in nature. So you have to be careful with the different styles of stairs that you are choosing. And you have to make sure that it's going to be the proper height for what you're doing. Now, sometimes you can clip the warehouse stairs a little bit through the floor, but that's only going to work on your first deck where no one's underneath. This is just a concrete foundation floor. No one's going to be inside there. But if I try and build a third floor, then this stairs or stairwell, if you do get it to clip through the second floor, is going to be very obviously sticking out underneath. So you do want to make sure you're using the proper stairs for the proper walls that you're working with. So that's about it for constructing a multi-story structure. Now let's talk about a multi-room structure because this gets a lot more confusing. So say I am building a shack here. So number one, my problem is that I cannot snap my walls to the inside diameter. And of course, that's because they will first try to snap to the outside of my flooring. And if that doesn't work, they will then try and snap in the same direction as the wall that they are continuing. So if I want to make an inside corner, I will have to pull out a floor in order to make the corner, and then I have to put the floor back in. So far, not too difficult. However, once I get that floor started, I run into a problem of how do I put a door into this structure? So let me just pull. Actually, I don't want to pull that floor out. All right, so now I have three of my walls, actually I have all four of my walls, but I need a doorway to get into this multi-room shack structure that we're building here. 
if I go with either the metal doorway or the shack, they're the exact same dimensions and they both snap exactly the same way. So if I go with this metal doorway and snap it in, you'll notice the metal doorway does not snap to the top of the flooring like the walls do. The metal flooring actually snaps to the outside because it's designed to be your entrance into a shack. So it actually snaps to the outside of the flooring the same way our concrete snaps to the outside of the flooring, which creates a problem when we're trying to drag our floor back in. So I can no longer snap my floor back where it used to be. This is one of the reasons why I do not like using the wood and the metal build sets is because I like to create multi-room structures. I like to separate things out and give all of my settlers their own space. When you're working with the shack build sets, it's very difficult to do that. And instead, you have to sacrifice a lot of privacy, which is a convenience for a post-apocalyptic world, but should not be considered something that is just so trivial that it should not be planned for. So we cannot use the doorways designed for the wood or metal system. Now here we are, we have pulled all of the wood and all of the metal walls out and we're working with concrete. And this is one of the reasons why I absolutely love the concrete build set, especially if you are doing multi-room structures. So. The nice thing about concrete is once a wall is started, it will snap to pretty much any other concrete wall as long as there isn't any like major terrain in the way. So if I'm trying to build my room in a multi-story structure, I can snap to a wall even if there is flooring in the way. So like I mentioned, there's flooring right there. Now, this only works with flooring. So if I did put in some roofs, If I try and snap a concrete wall where this roof is, it just will not work. I can snap to the outside of the roof, but I cannot snap through the roof like I can when I snap through flooring. So when I build multi-story concrete structures, I actually completely ignore the roofing section. I do everything with flooring. So the flooring, if you look at it, I probably shouldn't have torn those roofs out naturally only stacks to the floor. So you have to make sure that you can build up at least one more level when you're putting flooring in. But if you look at the difference in height, there is a difference in height to where the flooring actually rests slightly above the top of your wall. So that's why you're able to build multi-room structures if you just stick with flooring instead of adding roofs because you're only clipping through the bottom of your floor instead of having to clip through the bottom and top. So I think that is the collision that is occurring that prevents you from being able to snap your walls through roofing that does not prevent you from snapping walls through flooring. And it does bear mentioning that flooring does not like to go where other concrete already is. So flooring does not have the easy go lucky way of snapping that the walls do. So that's why you want to make sure that your flooring is in place before you set your walls. And so with your doorway, the doorway has the exact same behavior. It is a little bit more finicky about being sunk into the dirt than your standard walls. But here we are, we have a complete room in what would be a multi-story structure because the flooring can be placed above the walls that are currently existing and we have no collisions occurring. So that's one reason why I absolutely love the concrete build set. And for all of the people who whine about brutalistic architecture, this is post-apocalypse. If your choice is living in a burned out school bus or living in a brutalistic multi-story concrete fortress, who's going to choose? Well, I don't like brutalistic architecture. Okay, so that is building a multi-room 
structure. And that's mostly what I deal with in most of my builds. However, there is one more build set that I have not talked about at all when it comes to working with multi-floor, multi-story structures, and that is the Vault-Tec build set. So the Vault-Tec build set I do not use very often because you basically end up having to double everything and it really does not look good when you're done. But let me just show you an example of building a multi-room structure in a vault. So here we are, we build a corner and these are more geometrically complex than other build styles. So your build meter is going to fill up really quickly when you're working with vault structures. One thing to keep in mind when you're dealing with vault structures is that all vault structures will include a roof, and a floor. So your roof, floor, and walls are all self-contained. Now the exception is the atrium section of the vault build set, but we're talking specifically about rooms, not for atriums. So if we're building rooms, we always have to keep in mind that the floor and the ceiling will be included in them. So let's just say this is a very small two by two room. So here we are, we built four pieces and we have a completely enclosed room, floor, ceiling, and walls. But if we want to build another room, we actually have to snap them doorway to doorway. So this is one of the things that I really don't like about the vault build set is you basically have to double all of your interior walls. So you can't just get away with the fact that you have this entire wall to work with you have to continue to build a wall that goes with it. So you're kind of doubling up on what is necessary. And that's one reason I do not like the vault build set. But if we snap doorway to doorway there, if I just build a floor and ceiling here, I don't know, I fell off. Then you end up with this air gap here which is not indicative of a finely built Vault-Tec structure. And you have this unpainted, rusty outer shell as well that you have to deal with. So just building a floor and ceiling does not work here. So we have to once again go back to something that contains a wall. And so that's something that a lot of people do not take into account when they are building Vault-Tec structures. Another thing to keep in mind is that because all Vault-Tec rooms are a floor and a ceiling, there are no stairwells that you can use inside your rooms. You have to go with some sort of exterior stairwell. So Vault-Tec does include stairs, but these are mostly designed to go in the atrium. These are not designed to be used in the rooms section when you are building multi-story Vault-Tec structures. Instead, the tunnel sections, so we have the Vault Domestic and Vault Utility, these are designed for tunnels. These contain a stairwell to get you up to another level, and these are extremely bulky. These take up two floors and two floor squares on in any direction on each floor. So this is a pretty massive investment of real estate that you have to go into just to create stairwells that lead from one floor of a multi-story vault to another floor of a multi-story vault. So that is one reason why I do not like the Vault-Tec builds at one is it's geometrically complex and so it fills your build meter extremely quickly and the other is simply the fact that it takes up so much real estate and that's kind of a valuable commodity in all but a small handful of our settlement locations that we are able to build at. And with all that, I think we are ready to wrap up. So definitely let me know what you thought of this. I know a lot of people get um, irritated by the fact that so much of these Commonwealth contractor segments are filmed at night. And that's mostly just because once I get into my groove, I completely forget that there's a day and night segment. I just completely focus on the workshop 
and snapping pieces together. So I apologize that so much of this segment was at night and I'm going to try and get better about that in future Commonwealth contractor segments about making sure that I'm filming in the daytime so that it's easier for people to follow along with what's going on. But with all that said, let me know what you think of this strategy for building multi-room and multi-story structures. Did any of these tips and tricks help you out to understand how to build better structures? Or is all this just so kind of basic it wasn't even worth going into? Definitely let me know in the comments below. Until next time, it's been real. Stay safe, and I hope to see you all here next time at Gray Gaming.